Back at one time, cervical cancer was a leading cause of cancer in women, but thanks to the HPV vaccine and screening for the disease, cervical cancer is not as common as it once was. Nevertheless, research shows late stage cervical cancer appears to be on the rise. That's a concern. Dr. Frank Me George here to explain, and this is uh, timely. January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, right? Yes, it is. And this is actually a very good reminder about the need for awareness and continued screening. Now, while we don't exactly know why late stage cases appear to be increasing, there are a couple possible explanations. The pandemic, of course, saw a drop in screenings, and there has been a somewhat confusing change in the screening recommendations, putting them at these weird three to five year intervals. It's sort of hard to count by threes, and um, it's very easy to kind of lose track of when your pap smear was. And our guidelines are such that if it's done one way, then it's a different, slightly different screening protocol. So, and I think that may be one of the issues that has kind of led to an identification of more advanced cervix cancer that we're seeing in the United States. For those unfamiliar, cervical cancer is cancer of the cells in the cervix, which is the lowest part of a woman's uterus. Early stages of cervical cancer don't usually involve symptoms, and they can be hard to detect, making routine pap smears extremely important. The test can help identify any abnormal cells. However, when symptoms do occur, they can include bleeding after sex, pelvic pain, and vaginal discharge that contains blood. Cervical cancer is preventable, and it's often the result of the virus HPV, a sexually transmitted infection. So testing for that is equally as important. Dr. Robert DiBernardo of the Cleveland Clinic says the same goes for the HPV vaccine. Both men and women between the ages of 11 and 45 years old are eligible to get that. We developed a vaccine years ago, there's several on the market, that are extremely effective at preventing cancer. Um, in Australia, where uptake of vaccines are high, they're seeing a decrease in the amount of cervix cancer in that country. Now, according to the CDC, roughly 13,000 new cases of cervical cancer are diagnosed every year in the U.S., in addition to 4,000 deaths. So what are the screening recommendations? Well, so they vary by age. So between age 21 and 29, women should get a pap smear every three years. And then at age 30 until age 65, there are some choices. You can continue pap tests every three years, or you can get an, what's called a high-risk HPV test alone or in combination with a pap smear, and that would be every five years. Now, I should point out that HPV test actually still involves getting a sample from the cervix, so while it can help extend the screening to five years, it still means a GYN exam. Mm -hmm. And being high risk, I would imagine that means you have a family member that maybe had it or at higher risk of cancer. Right, so if you are at high risk, your screening intervals are different. So high risk HPV test actually refers to HPV strains that put you at higher risk. So it's, it's kind of a funny little name that probably doesn't make much sense to most people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Doug. Mm -hmm.